We're going to find out the latest about prisoner Leonard Peltier. He was convicted of first-degree murder in the deaths of two FBI agents in a 1975 shooting on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. He's being held at the United States Penitentiary in Coleman, north of Tampa, and many people think he was wrongly convicted and consider him to be a political prisoner. And we're joined by our next guest right now. Gene Roach is president of the ILPDC board. That's the International Leonard Peltier Defense Committee. Welcome to Tuesday Cafe, Gene. Yeah. How are you? How's everybody? I'm good. Thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. We're going to uh, kind of update people on this case that has been going on for decades now. And it may be a special interest to people in this area because uh, right in our area is this Coleman Penitentiary, which is where Leonard Peltier is. Last Thursday, the free Leonard Peltier Now Twitter account posted that Peltier was released from the hospital and he still needs medical care. So what can you tell us about the health of Leonard Peltier? Well, um, Leonard's been sick for a while and he continues to get worse every day um when he had covid uh when he was inside coleman he was denied proper care one including basic drinking water and um everyone knows that coleman has a bad uh water problem so i just feel that his his continued decline due to diabetes and his other heart issues can be avoided you know with the proper care and one is real basic is exercise. And when they're on 24 hour lockdown, you don't get that. And, you know, a lot of the other prisoners suffered the same fate. So what we need to do is, um, you know, basically get the, um, the, the basic human rights thing, the human rights um, issues, you know, just brought to the real basic levels of, hey, we're human, he's human. Everybody there is human, and they deserve the basic health care and water, for one. So Leonard, right now, he's going for executive clemency, and he's been for a long time. Um, there's been so many people that have been released, you know, people that have shot at presidents and stuff like that, and they've been released. Now, Leonard Peltier um, has been in there for almost 50 years. And there was no credible evidence that his initial trial was a railroad. So everybody knows the case. There's so many um, uh, violations all the way down from basic human rights, constitutional, federal, even international laws are broken to keep Leonard or get him into the prison. And with all that, they still continued their vendetta. The FBI is the one reason why he's in there. And they're not allowed on our reservations in the very beginning. They should never have been there. And the reason why they came to Oglala in 1975 was looking for somebody that stole somebody's cowboy boots. What is that? Now, that's a, just a, um, a manufactured lie to have a reason to be there because illegal. they were there illegal. We have an 1868 treaty, which states has rules on that. And they continue to ignore our pleas for Leonard to be released as an elder. His co-defendants were acquitted on the basis of self-defense. That would be the same thing for him. And anybody was there at that camp. It didn't really matter what and who did what. The bottom line is we have a right to defend our freedom. And they defended us as children. Saved our lives. So he should not be in prison. In an email you described to yourself, as a survivor of the 1975 Ogala shoot, shootout where Leonard, and you say Leonard protected us. So what do you mean by that? There was a, the, the, where they had attacked the FBI was a home of the grandma and grandpa. And there were several houses in the area, like a ranch and mostly women and children. And we were happy that the grandma and grandpa were not there that day because their house got hundreds of bullet holes in it. It was an old log cabin. It was totally ruined. And, you know, they didn't come with a warrant. The whole climate of the reservation was real irritable considering wounded knee happened a couple of years before. So uh, there was a price tag on American Indian movement leaders. You know, anybody that participated or even um, were friends with AIM people were targets by the, then it was the corrupt, corrupt government run by the BIA, which you have a 
tribal president named Wilson who made targets of everybody. And Leonard was one of the targets as a leader, the reason why a lot of this has happened to him. And we've had several different um, violations by the FBI trying to change the story, trying to cover their tracks. And we have documents on on several issues that they try to twist and make it look like Leonard's the bad person, which in fact, he's not. He's a human person, you know. But of course, so, the stereotypes that we face are daily as Native people. And so you are asking people to contact the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee, and you want to see the, the BOP gives Peltier an emergency medical transfer to FMC Rochester. So what is FMC Rochester? Why there? And what's the BOP and what role do they have in the next steps? Well, for one, uh, Rochester is a medical unit with skilled um, physicians. Uh, with the injury that had happened to him when he was in the hospital, it's typical of a diabetic patient. You know, they start needing, um, you know, they, they don't get the right exercise or the right food. And, you know, so much carbs and stuff like that and bad water, you know. So by transferring him out to a better facility will enable him to have better care or care at all. The way the facilities run, they don't give you the right care. They think everybody's lying or making it up, but he needs emergency help. And he's been for a long time, his eyesight is giving out. You know, he was a great artist and now he doesn't have that satisfaction of painting a picture. I have one of them in the background that he painted. And you know, it's a sad fact that the, the United States government continues his vendetta and the native people see it as a reason why not to trust the United States government. If they can hold Paltier in there for 50 years, they'll never come to the table with good faith. They continue to keep him. That tells us that none of us are free until Leonard Paltier is free. Our and that's is, just the way it is. Our guest is Gene Roach, president of the ILPDC board. That's the International Leonard Peltier Defense Committee. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan, and we're speaking to uh, everyone live on November 5th, Election Day here. We're broadcasting from the studios of WMNF in Tampa. And uh, you mentioned earlier executive clemency, that, that other people have been uh, granted executive clemency, but in the nearly 50 years of this case, uh, that hasn't happened it's the closing days or months, that is, of the, the um, Biden presidency. What kind of, um, what kind of uh, talks have you had with the Biden administration and how does executive clemency look? Is that a possibility? I think anything's a possibility, but I'll tell you what, when it comes to Native people, we're never given fair treatment. And one of the reasons is because this is all stolen land. And one thing about the vendetta that the FBI holds against Paltier is they will have to admit to their lies and corruption. We're talking about 50 years, probably more before that. The intimidation, the infiltration, you know, that they did to the movements is definitely part of this story. So it's a bigger picture. And it, like I told you, it reflects on Indian country and how we perceive the United States government and them not being able to come to the table with good faith because they allow Leonard Paltier to be railroaded and suffering in prison as an elder. He did his time regardless. His co-defendants were acquitted on the basis of self-defense. Self-defense, that was found by a court. So there ain't no way United States government was going to let him get away. Their vendetta was to have a scapegoat, and they continued to push it. Leonard needs to be free, and until he's free, who are we? And what is the United States government about? What's the Constitution? Real basic. The Constitution gives us rights. Why aren't we allowed to have it the same as everybody else? Well, Gene, uh, those are my questions. Excuse me. And so I just wanted to, to see if there was anything else that I, that I didn't get to ask that you want to let us know about the health or the condition or the possible executive clemency of Leonard Peltier, who is in Coleman Federal Prison, just north of Tampa. Yeah, so people would reach out to the president, anybody, uh, Congress. We have a lot of support of Congress already, but we need more people to let them aware that they need to uh, 
to follow their own rules, really, and let him be a free person. He only has a few years of his life left. He's never held his great-grandchildren, his children. You know, just a real basic hug is something that we take for granted that he doesn't get to have. He needs to heal. He needs to come back to his community. We have our own religion. He needs to be able to participate on a religious level inside the prison also. There's so many things that Leonard needs, and at least meeting the need of him getting medical care is real basic. And executive clemency would be, you know, the right thing to do for President Biden. And we encourage that to be uh, be right, you know, stand up for what's right, not for the pu what the puppet strings say. Well, I want right? to thank you so much for joining us on Tuesday Cafe, Gene. Thank you. Well, thank you, Gene. Ro there. Yep, free out there. Gene Roach is president of the ILPDC board. That's the International Leonard Peltier Defense Committee. And this is Tuesday Cafe.